Happy Sunday to you. How are you doing? Let me get my little. Hey, how are you doing? Black's Tropical Homestead in the his house. I shouted you out while I um did a hostile takeover, Grow Family Network, Sunday Backyard Farmer interview. It was a hostile takeover, people. I'm telling you. <laughs> hey, what's up? Psalms 146. She says, first. Okay. Oh, speaking of which, did you um see the card? So, haven't got my card yet, but I'll give you an update. Hey, K Renee. How you doing? See you there. I see you too, hunty. Peekaboo. Oh, wow. Wait a minute. The cap going um. Faster than what I can um, read, y'all. Come on, y'all. Y'all popping. Hey, Cheryl Faulkner. How are you doing? Peek-a-boo. Nice to see you, hunty. Oh, uh, oh, later, hell. Hey, Talena Cunningham. So my mom's maiden name was Cunningham, but that's neither here nor there. <gasps> uh, let me make sure that I'm not missing anyone. Gee, Mama Groves, peekaboo, honey. Hi. I got to go back and see it. Okay. So here we are in the kitchen and Sunday Backyard Farmer is right here. So come and say hello to everybody. Come on. Say hello. That's it. You know, you want me to do like you did? Grow Family Network is listening. He's not watching, so you gotta say hello. Hey, what's going on, everybody? How y'all doing? Let's see who's in the chat. <laughs> Let's see who's in the chat. <laughs> yeah, um, I was behind. Who was on? Um, I was not in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, now when I was what's going him, on? <laughs> when I was him, what's up, songs? Cheryl Faulkner, Black's Tropical Homestead, Psalms 146. Who was, uh, who was, um, who else is it? It ain't moving. Is it moving? I'm doing this right. Y'all see why I don't go live. <laughs> Cunningham, what's going on? Is K. Renee here? You said K. Renee? Yeah. Oh, there go. K. Renee. I want to say it like, uh, who was that? Uh, Ice Cube. K. A. <laughs> uh, hopefully, y'all got a chance to catch the interview. Y'all know my rib was there, and um, yeah, that was that was dope. I had a good time. I had a real good time, man. I like I like the fact that I actually watch his videos, and I know certain things. I've been watching them for a long time, and I think. Um, Spooning with Sunshine said she used to watch Lead Farmer and um, Grow Family Network back to back. And she's right, because when I used to watch Lead, the next video used to pop up, used to be Grow Family Network. It's like that's the way it used to just run. So that's how I ended up finding his channel. What's up, G Mama? She said, Pickaboo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a few people in here. Yes. So, yeah, that's it. I don't have anything else to say, but I pre appreciate y'all. And um, like I said, I hope y'all got a chance to see that live that we was just saw. And it was pretty awesome. So what are we making today, honey? Hey, can you get my balsamic vinegar up, up there in the back? My balsamic <laughs> balsam vinegar. <laughs> So we're making um beef short ribs. Um, they ain't never seen nobody make any tall ones. <laughs> so this is why he has multiple jobs, but comedian is not one of them. <laughs> that part. Anyway, but what happened to my smoked paprika? Do you know? No, I don't cook. I have no idea. See? Oh. There you go, people. This right here. Sorry, I'm still kind of like getting things together, but you know, I was all up in his business. You know what I'm saying? All up in my biz naive. I was all up in his biz naive. And I am going to use some, um, y'all see that? 
black garlic, regular pepper, but we will use some kosher salt. Now, I did find this recipe online. It's a little bit different than the first recipe that I saw. If you keep the bones on your short ribs. Now, I do want, can you pick that up for me? The plastic is still on there. <laughs> still in the plastic. <laughs> Um, be short rib are expensive by every stretch of imagination. Oh, wow. I'm going to put that out there. They are not, it's not a cheap meal. So, but if you're looking for something different to make for Christmas or whatever you may celebrate or don't celebrate, because I know some people who don't celebrate Christmas, but they sure do do a lot of cooking around that time. But anyway, I just, at least I digress. <clears throat> These that I got right here, and they're very meaty. Um, Is that glaring? And I got two packs. They are 17 and $19, and they're basically two pounds of beef, okay? So if you know of a butcher or somewhere or someone who has cows and you can get it cheaper, by all means, do what you gotta do. But this is how much they were at Publix. Um, they may have been a little cheaper at Walmart. I don't know. But when it comes to buying meats and stuff of this nature, I would like um, Publix because I get to see the butcher back there doing his thing. Okay. Peek a boo. So, um, yes, expensive. Now, it will normally take many hours to cook these if I do it the traditional way. But I'm going to put them in the Instapot. And I'm just going to share with you this um, recipe, and hopefully you can do it as well. Now, the time factor. If you cut the bone off or have the butcher cut the bone off, it lessens the time. If you don't do that, then um, the time is increased. Someone is texting me. So... It could be 40 to 50 minutes without the bone and then 50 minutes to 110 to an hour and 10 minutes with the bone. But I did want you to see this first. Now, I am going to, hey, welcome. She says, cheaper at Kroger. Girl, you know I don't like Kroger. Um, <laughs> you know I don't like Kroger. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I had to send Sunday in there to get it, you know, me and Kroger. Hey, Dre Finest, welcome. Great interview. New subscriber. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, now y'all know she's sedated. She don't even want to be seen in Kroger. She's going to send, <laughs> give me the list to go in Kroger to get it, but she won't be seen in there. That's horrible. I grew up on Kroger's. <laughs> when did see Piggly Wiggly? But she's a she's a public girl. Oh, now let's not talk. I like Win Dixie back in the day. You know, I'm accustomed to that. I just have never been a fan of Kroger's. There is one Kroger here in Atlanta Metropolitan that I absolutely love. The way that is organized, it makes better sense to me. It doesn't have a stench when I walk in there or whatever. But yeah, I'd rather be at Walmart <laughs> or Publix. <laughs> no offense to you, Kroger um shoppers. Now, Kroger, if you want to holler at a girl, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got my Kroger Plus card. I got mine too, just in case. You know, <laughs> I get. I got me some this weekend, so I'm looking at your recipe and going to do this. Just don't get eggs from Kroger. Oh Lord, see you. You deepening it now, honey. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, this recipe for those who are going to want to do it. I will drop it into the description, but it's um, six pounds of short ribs if you are doing it for four people. Well, I'm not cooking that much, so this is four pounds of short ribs. Um, onion, a half a cup of bourbon, which I may not do that part with the bourbon. And sometimes people use red wines. I am trying to, what a grow family now. Wait, what's wrong with Kroger's? We don't even have one here. <laughs> You're not missing anything. No. <laughs> now, to, to, uh, to Kroger's defense, 
Um, they do have their Kroger Plus card. And when you spend money there, you can um, get uh, get it off at the pump because they have their, you know, well, most of them have their own gas stations. In addition to that, um, they do have these 10 for 10. You can get like 10 things for $10. That That is good as well. It's just that my experience, okay, this is not about anyone else's experience. So that is the um, that is my disclaimer, right? The Krogers that I have encountered, I don't like the way that they are organized. It doesn't really make sense to me. Sometimes it's just like, what, where, what in the world? This, that, the other, right? May not be the cleanest. And when I go into their meat department, the ones I have encountered, except for one. And that one's off of I-20 um, over there off of Kennedy Way where Enso Apartments are. Except for that one. The rest of them, I don't care. Peachtree City, wherever. They have a stench. And I, I won't smell my meat, honey. I will not smell no meat. You know, <laughs> my father used to always say, fish, if you smell a real nasty smell with fish, and it's some bad fish, <laughs> right? <laughs> I feel the same way about meat. Don't want to smell it, honey, but I'm just saying. Who else has come up in the chat? Good evening. Hey, Melissa, what's going on? Yeah, so y'all just talking away. Hey, Tony, how are you doing? Hey, O.L. Austin, how are you doing? Progress fruit and vegetables, so go bad really fast. Um, Yeah, now, Publix does have dope produce, okay? But anyone paid attention to my community post it was an article yahoo and it was talking about how the cost of fruit and vegetables have gone up astronomically across the board regardless of wherever you live okay that's more reason why you need to grow your own honey grow learn drop a seed honey make it do what it do get it while you can still get seeds affordably right See, some of these people in the garden community, they bougie, honey. They growing stuff that you can't get out of the um, grocery store. But what I'm about to tell you is for those who are not, you and you just need your ordinary food, honey, go and get them, them, them cheap seeds, 50, 49 cents a pack, whatever. Learn how to throw something in the dirt and grow your own, honey, because, you know, it's it's un it's unaffordable to stay healthy. Yeah, see that peekaboo. Anywho, <laughs> so I um, I have some. I don't have bourbon per se. Hey, what do you consider what we do have down there? Because I I definitely don't want to use my wine. Mm. But you want to use something out of here? Huh? You want to use something out of here? Yeah. You got some whiskey instead of me using bourbon. Oh, I mean, because all of my Crown Royale is like. This is not enough. Oh, is that a half a cup? No. Oh, let me see it. Well, I'll go ahead and do the recipe, y'all, but y'all need a half a cup of bourbon. That's the best. And this is not a half a cup. <laughs> Can I use some of yours? Whiskey and you. <laughs> so I'll use a half a cup of bourbon. Hey, Ruth. How are you doing? Love oh, Publix man. Fruit Investory. Growing my own has been the best ever. I live in Gwinnett County. What's up? Who said that? O.L. Austin in the, his house. Ruth, I was just about to ask you. I probably asked you before. What side of, what, what side of Georgia do you live in? So... Um, we have our short ribs. Um, I'm going to take this Vidalia onion. You can use whatever type of onion you want to. But if I'm going to eat the onion, I like a sweet onion. Um, I'm going to do half of that one. But get you a medium one, half a cup of bourbon, paprika. But I'm going to use smoked paprika, Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's, holla at your girl. Mm. Um, I'm not going to do the the half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. For those who are following my blog, you know that I 
am healing from acid reflux and I'm on medicine for 30 days to find out what was causing the acid reflux. So I have to stay away from all citrus. I have to stay away from pineapple. I have to stay, stay away from um, spicy food and I have to stay away from chocolate. Okay. So, and then after the 30 days, my body will do a reset and then I can start introducing and I, of course, I have to stay away from tomatoes. Then I can start introducing those foods back in, but one food at a time to see if I have a reaction. And if I have a reaction, then that's the food that gets the boot that I just have to take out my diet. I am hoping that it is not my favorite, which is pineapple, because at two years ago, when this clearing of my throat and situation with my throat began, I was consuming a lot of pineapple. Even when I eat pineapple, it kind of like burns my tongue, but I'll just take one for the team because I absolutely, pineapple is my favorite fruit, but if it got to go, it got to go. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so three tablespoons of sugar, um, balsamic vinegar, vinegar, but I only have, yeah, I'm going to use this one. Um, I don't, have the cloves of garlic, so I'm just going to go heavy on the garlic stuff, because I didn't have time, y'all. If y'all know how busy I've been, <laughs> a cup of beef stock, cornstarch, and water. Now, let, let us look at the short rib. They're short. You see this? And this meat is colored well. If it is brown, and it is, is and it's beef, then you might be right there on the line of, is it spoiled? No smell at all. No smell. Good. This is the bone right here. It's a thick bone. Now, you can get the butcher to cut that bone out. And there was six of them that came in a pack. But look at that. Do you see that? So what I'm going to do right now, you don't have to do this. I know a lot of um, cook and cooking channel and experts and stuff. They say you don't have to rinse your meats. However, I don't care what they say. Honey, I'm going to rinse my meats and I'm going to pat them dry. How about that? You do you. It's your choice. <laughs> Dorsha, you sh sure hope you don't have to give us something you really like. Hope is one of the ones you really don't like. See, that's the thing. It's like, I love pineapple. I love chocolate. Citrus, I wouldn't say that I love it, but it's just like, it's like, you know, a base type of thing, right? Like lemon. Like if I'm having tea, I want lemon juice, right? And I lose lemon juice in cooking. I love tomato based stuff. It's just like, Hey, but at the end of the day, my throat has gotten better. And even when I was singing today in church, honey, oh, the soprano, second soprano was in the house. Hey, hey, go girl, go girl. Ah, 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 ah. Okay, anyway, let me get my um, liner. And I'm going to take you over to the Instapot. Now, one thing I did want to share about you with your Instapot, you see this top, there are these, um, they come inside of them and you put them inside of here and it, it's a sealer, it seals. You put it in there and then you press down and you need to take it out every single time you use your Instapot. So I don't know who I'm helping right now, but make sure you clean this because if not, with that temperature and that moisture and that heat, you can get mold and you do not want mold incubating inside of your Instapot where this sealer is, okay? So that's what, that's it. And then they give you an extra one. I haven't had to use this one. So, also, and I will bring bring you over here. 
Uh, I'll bring you over here later. On the back of your Instapot is a place for the for water for water to um come through, and you need to empty that as well and dry that out. No mold, no mold. Mold is not good, okay. We don't want any of that. So, what are y'all making for Christmas dinner? Are some people traditionalists and you're going to make everything basically that you made for Christmas? Or are you doing something different? Like I have done seafood Christmas, barbecue Christmas, Asian Christmas, Mexican Christmas, <laughs> everything. Tapas, Chris, I mean, uh, I just be like anything but turkey and ham and all that stuff. Woo! This stuff lasts forever. It's a gift that keep giving. Hey, Mike, how are you doing? Welcome to the chat, because the chat is where it's at. Black Tropical, they're doing seafood. All right, go ahead. Somebody else tell me. What are y'all cooking? I'm going to bring y'all over here so that y'all can see what I'm doing. Come on down. And the thing about it is, it's like, these things are expensive for almost like no reason. But I do like the fact that um, at Publix, they make sure they take off a lot of that extra fat and they get it as lean and ready to cook as possible. So that's a good thing. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to pat them dry, pat them dry. You do not want to leave water on these. Okay, I'm going to take my paring knife. I'm going to take off a little bit of that. But yeah, pat them dry. Yeah, do not cook your beef with water on them, with water on the beef. Even if you were doing a steak, pat it dry. Chicken, you can get away with it depending on what you're doing. But if you're frying it, then by all means, pat that dry too. Is anyone having a lot of rain? Because Lord knows we are. I was um, in Broke, Farm, Broke Farmer's chat trying to um, get some suggestions on how to deal with this fungus, this mold that's at the bottom of one of my Brussels sprouts because of all of this rain that we're getting. Probably need another hole at the bottom of my um, container because I have some Brussels sprouts that are in my garden, my raised garden bed. And then I wanted to try something different. I had a wonderful time growing Brussels sprouts last year in my raised um, garden bed at the old house. <clears throat> but, you know, we're at a new house. And so I have a new, um, I have two um, garden beds now. Whereas I had one before. But, uh, yeah. Be fruitful and multiply. So, yes. Um, Sunday multiplied for me, but I wanted to experiment and do Brussels sprouts in a container, right? Well, yeah, well, well, that's all I can say. And they're growing faster than the ones that are in the ground. Well, I have a couple that are in the ground that are, I actually have like a stick trying to hold one up because it is growing. Back. I am the queen of Brussels sprouts. I'm the queen of Brussels sprouts. There is none higher. Sucker MC, she called me sire. To burn my Brussels, you must use fire. I won't start garden till I retire. Okay, y'all got that free of charge. But I, yeah. So anyway, <clears throat> take your salt. Y'all come on down with me. I'm gonna make sure my countertop is nice and clean. I am going to use some avocado oil. You can use olive oil. You can use whatever you want to use in your um, in your um, 
Instant Pot, but I'm using avocado oil. But let's get to this. And don't forget the merch. Array of Sunshine. S-O-N Shine. Okay, peekaboo. All right, so. Hello, motivational from the weightlifting geek. My husband just told me to say hello. Hey, Barb, how you doing? Now, this is just too much fat, okay? So, what we'll do, we'll take our handy-dandy paring knife. See, they don't rip me off with all this daggone fat. You see this? Y'all seeing this live. Oh, Look at all that. See what I'm saying? And then I only got a little something left. Look, all this. And guys, remember, this is brought to you in part by Publix. <laughs> Hey, don't be messing up my sponsorship opportunities with public policy. We love See, you. <laughs> it would have been even more fat. <laughs> and it would have been brown. <laughs> no, we're just joking, Publix. I mean, Kroger. No, Publix too, but mainly Publix because, you know, Publix highly at the girl. She's double minded. <laughs> Long as I don't lose Walmart. <laughs> I am so pleased. I'm gonna um do a, a drop of video giving y'all a tour of the renovations our Walmart did. I am just blown away at how Walmart is looking. I'm like, what in the world? Am I in a department store? Like, what the world? Who is looking nice, hunty? Um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm not gonna spoil it, but I am gonna take y'all. Along with, I'm just taking off some of the excess fat. You do not have to, but I am. So, see, kosher salt. You can use some pink salt if you want to. Now, uh oh. It fell. Oh, God. <laughs> Thank God I took out what I wanted. Um, this kosher salt is really going to help bring out the natural flavors of the beef. Peekaboo. And when you're doing your steak, if you're going to do a steak in your skillet or on the grill, get you a nice kosher salt and rub your um, beef. Now, we don't have to do the bone. But if you want a quicker cook time, you can take, just cut the bone off. But I'm not going to do that to all of them because that would be insane. So, I mean, this one is a good piece of meat. Do you see that? Yeah. But um, you see, I got got on some of these, you know what I'm saying? But on this one, if you, if you do take the bone off, then you need to take this extra layer of, of skin off. That's what you need to do. But I'm gonna keep the bone on the rest, but for those who want to, um, who want it boneless, yeah, you can do that, okay? Take you some salt and rub it in there, okay? Now, we're gonna do a couple of these at a time, a couple minutes a piece. Ooh, honey, this one is just thick. You see this? Let me make sure I get the sides on this. And that's another thing, when you're um, cooking the bigger ones, make sure that when you, cause we're gonna go over to the Instapot and I'm gonna put you down so you can see what I'm doing. Make sure that you use some salt on the sides. Make sure you rub the salt in. Okay, I'm gonna take this over here and then you come and join me. Come on. Set y'all up over here so we can be together. Okay, this is nice and hot. Can y'all see? I'm going to take some avocado oil, not a whole lot. Uh 
I'm going to do about four at a time. We are sharing the meat, which will fill the flavor in the meat, okay? Also, when you're making a good steak, you want to do likewise. Sear it, and then you can turn the heat down and let it cook to the temperature that you want. Whether it's well done, medium well, medium rare, whatever you like. But the first thing you always need to do when making your beef is to sear to prep in your flavor. And so we're going to do a couple minutes on each side. Lift it up a little bit. We don't want it to sit. And let it do what it do. After this, <clears throat> we're going to do all of them on all sides, two to three minutes per side. And it's almost like you want to caramelize them. So that's like a medium brown. And then we'll move on to, um, well, then I need to um, cut up the onion. And we're going to take whatever it is that we create. Create. We're going to deglaze this pan once we brown our meat. We're going to deglaze it with our bourbon. Now, to do the sides, literally, just lift it up. Lift it up. You see how big this is? You see how big this is? Just lift it up and point it. Put the bone near the outer side. Now I can add some more. Now remember, this is saute. This is the saute on your instant pot. Meanwhile, I'm just doing the size on these other ones that were in there. I have room for one more. Let's pick something. This one, I really feel like they ripped me off. We'll, we'll go ahead and just do that. Let me come over to the chat. I'm back over here. I was reading the chat. Okay, now I'm going to turn it over. Because you know it has two sides, right? You got to do the other side. But this is what it needs to look like. Can you see this? Put that over there. And yes, I'm putting my hand in here. If you be careful. Make sure you know what you're doing. Know your Instant Pot. <laughs> Little piece. Man, when I tell you what 
the world is this? Or is this the bone out there? I don't know. Honey, that is not doing anything. Let's put this in here. All right, y'all. Let that cook on the side. Let it cook on the side. Let's find another piece we can put in here. This one I'm going to move out of here so I can add more. Because we're not going to spend our whole lives. See that? Doing this. Now, you could put them all in a skillet and do this, but the reason why you probably wouldn't want to is because of what it's creating on the bottom of the Instapot. This is where all your yummy yummy is going to happen. Because I'm going to add onion to this. Then I'm going to add a half a cup of bourbon. And I'm going to caramelize the onions. And then I'm going to add the paprika, the sugar, and the balsamic vinegar. Then I'm going to place the instant. I'm going to place the um, short ribs back in there. And I'm going to set it and forget it. Huh. So it's bad in there? Well, the, the fat is really not going to do that much for you. I'm talking about for the, the bottom. Like if it runs it down and then it's cooking the onion stuff. Yeah, you probably, but because we're adding the bourbon and the other stuff, you oh. may not want that because we're actually going to create a sauce for this and we, you don't want the fat in your sauce, that greasiness in your sauce. Yeah. Oh, it smells good, people. It smells good. Now, mind you, I cannot see the chat, but um, do chat it up with one another. And I just have one more to go, and we'll be done with this part of it. How many people actually like short ribs? Now, the short ribs that I would normally make We'll have red wine in them and um, tomato, but not, well, tomato paste and stuff. And it'll be, you know, a different type of sauce. But I also like them with, like, a nice gravy. This is just a different type of recipe. So we'll see. We'll see whether or not we like it. But I'd rather try it out, and then I'll let you know in my weekly vlog, I'll have Sunday taste it and tell you what he thinks before you go out there spending all this money on these short ribs, honey. Woo! Yes. We are almost finished with that. Now you have me again. Hey, people. How are you doing? So, I am still working on my birthday blog. And, uh, yeah. Editing. It's never the filming that's the issue. It's the editing. That part. My body don't like pork anymore. Not even bacon. These, these are... These are beef short ribs. This, this has no pork in it. Sad, G mama. Okay. That's how I cook my short ribs. Wait a minute. What are y'all talking about? Well, how did we even get talking about um, pork? Because we're making beef short ribs. Did I miss someone? I thought I just missed someone. Anyway. Yeah, you got to listen to your body. If your body can't do the pork, don't do the pork. 
some people, matter of fact, I have a friend, she cannot eat chicken. She cannot eat chicken at all. And she has to listen to her body. And as much as she would like to have some, she can't. And she does not, she's allergic to shellfish. So no chicken, no crustacean. She can eat beef, of course, but you know, we eat beef in moderation, right? Because we know how long it takes our body to process beef. Eating beef every day is not good for anyone's body. Um, so then you have, you know, fish. And some people aren't into turkey like that. So, I mean, you know, I'm not a fan of lamb. So, I am about to cut up um, half of this large onion. Uh oh. Sorry about that. I am going to slice it thin. Thin. Now you could do the whole onion if you wanted to, but I try to do nice proportionate. As the recipe actually says a medium one, but I had a large onion, so here we go. Um, what are y'all talking about? <laughs> exactly, being galore. What y'all talking about? <laughs> okay, so let's go over back over here. So I can add this. Now, I want you to see what this looks like. You see how that looks burnt? Yeah, it looks burnt, right? That's exactly what you want going on. I'm going to get some Evans Williams Kentucky bourbon. And I'm going to get a half a cup. Now, you know that once you cook and heat alcohol, it loses its potency. So don't worry about you going to get drunk because you're not. Let me remove this little piece of meat. This is called deglazing. Taking all this goodness, honey. Yeah, come on. Come through. Yes. And we're going to saute these and um, caramelize the onions. The deglazing part is a very important part of this process. That's why you didn't see me add any more oil. And as Sunday was asking, well, what about just putting the fat in there and letting that, you know, cook it versus just adding the oil? You don't want greasy oil. I mean, greasy um, sauce or gravy or whatever it is that you're creating. So we'll let that cook. Once, once we get these somewhat caramelized, then we're going to add the paprika, the sugar, and the balsamic, and then we're going to finish sauteing, and then we're going to put this, um, put our um, ribs in, ribs in here. So, but I'll tell you one thing: it smells delicious. <laughs> Roots to a garden. What's going on? That flavor, my son says, when he makes his food, that flavor. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, honey. 
that whiskey and I'm I'm not I'm not a bourbon. I don't really drink dark liquors at all. <laughs> I'm more like vodka. Mm, vodka rum. I can do vodka or rum, preferably vodka. But tequila and no. You know <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm cooking and watching lives and trying to comment at the same time. <laughs> hey, no problem. What you cooking, Rio's Family Garden? <laughs> Let us know. Let us know. So we're going to go over there. That's going to caramelize. We're going to add our paprika. Now, the other stuff that I'm adding, the recipe does not call for. But when you are a cook, you know what flavors you want to marinate. You know what I mean? It's just like, mm, this right here, well, not marinate, marry. Because certain flavors, they just marry together. You know what I'm saying? And you're just like, I want that flavor. So what I am going to add, because I want that flavor in there, because I think it would be good because I'm smelling that bourbon, is to add some bay leaf in there. Hunty. Woo! Let's get some bay leaf. Let's get that bay leaf. Yes, that, that bay leaf. Yeah, that, that right there is going to marry with that bourbon, I promise you. So write that down because whatever I'm getting ready to drop in the description for the recipe, honey, is not going to have the bay leaf. So note to self, add that bay leaf up in there. And I'm going to add black garlic, okay? And the garlic powder and everything, but I'm going to add the black garlic as well. And, uh, yeah, and I'll probably add some onion powder because that's what we do. Even though we got onion in there, we need some more onion flavor. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Hmm. That part. <laughs> you just got to know what you know. So Rio is cooking salmon. Everybody say salmon. Now, when I was in my 20s and I was at a restaurant and I was with, you know, someone and he was buying me dinner and we were at a fancy restaurant and I said, I want some salmon and blah, 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 blah. And then after the waiter left and he was like, is it is not pronounced salmon. It is salmon. Then he sent me the little link dictionary.com and they, you know, they have the little audio and you can click it. And sure enough. It says salmon. So if you are pronouncing the L, you are incorrect. The L is silent, honey. It's salmon, 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 salmon. Um, 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 um. Look, you know, you can make a song out of anything. I'm just <laughs> y'all like, Dorsha, what in the world? Um, I need a new um drawer for my um. Woo! Oh my goodness, people! You gotta come over here right now. This stuff it smells so good. Oh, I feel it in my shana. -na. We're gonna take some garlic. We're gonna take that. We're gonna take this. We're gonna take some pepper. <laughs> We're about to be over here. Mm, honey, yes. And remember, we need um, beef broth, but uh, let's go over here and let's finish this up so that y'all can see that we're doing what we're doing, Shadi. All right. So when I say caramelize your onion, this is what I'm talking about, okay? This is what I am talking about. Do y'all see that? Now, I'm going to add some paprika. Paprika. Uh huh. I'm going to add some onion powder, even though it doesn't call for it, but you just know what you know, and you know what you know. I'm going to add some garlic powder, because you know what you know, and you know what you know. And I'm going to add some black garlic, and that's also going to be visually pleasing to the eye. Now, woo! Oh my goodness! Woo, honey! It's smelling good. 
was a thing. Oh my God. Now, I'm going to put these in here. I'm going down because you're not around. Baby, my whole world upside down. Please don't come easy. Now, I'm going to add some more because, you know, I don't have the garlic cloves. Add more garlic on top of my meat. Some more of this. Yes. And I am going to add some pepper because I don't know why it wouldn't want us that pepper. And I'm going to add a cup of um, beef broth, but I put a bay leaf. Is it shaking? Shaking on paper? Uh, okay. One cup of beef broth. And now we are going to. Set it. Wait a minute. I missed one thing. Some of our balsamic, balsamic vinegar. Yes. There you go. Mm, that's about three tablespoons. <laughs> Woo, honey. Oh, it smells so good. So, hey, why is my thing acting crazy? There you go. I guess why people don't see that. This stuff. Once he figures that out, then you said it. Now, this is the part that I want to leave y'all with. Unlike the ham and the mm -hmm. other and the other dishes that I made with the Instant Pot, and I could do like 20 minutes and it'd be done. This one is hour in the Instant Pot, which of course, well, it would probably take me about four hours if I made the short ribs the way that I would normally do. So this is an hour, so it's better, okay? He's complaining about the balsamic vinegar. That stuff is. But I will make some mashed potatoes and I will steam some broccoli. So peekaboo, I will drop it in my weekly vlog, but the pepper. <laughs> I would like to thank y'all. Y'all could have been anywhere today, but you decided to spend these 60 minutes with me. I am so appreciative. And of course, I have my sidekick. <laughs> so I will be going live on Wednesday. And I will be discussing how to identify frenemies. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, 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 dun. It's when a person's like a friend, but they really are your enemy. Friend of me. Friend of me.
Yes, I'm glad I found you today. I'm glad we found each other in these YouTube streets. Shout out to Grow Family Network. Grow Family Network. Grow Family Network. 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 Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> oh, L. Austin, I totally enjoyed this live. I totally enjoyed you being here. I totally enjoyed you being here. Uh, uh. Yeah, I'm over at six o'clock. So I got like two minutes to give shout out to the people who joined us. You know what I'm saying? You saying to Lala? Where's Lala? Oh, hey, Lala. She's driving. You better stop texting. La 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 Linda Holmes is in his house. Thank you for sharing. Saw you on Grow Family Network. Another shout out to Grow Family Network. Grow Family Network. Grow Family Network. Network. <laughs> Got broke twerking. <laughs> oh, Mike K.R. Garcia, hit that note. Hit that note. What up, Mike? Man, Mike, I want to have you on, man. I want to know a little bit more about you, Mike. Oh, but um, I also want to give a shout out to Gary Belt Loop 29. Yes, sir. I will be um, a guest on, on his platform, and I have been given the honor of shouting out 10 channels for 10 channels of my picking to share with others to for more subscribers. So yes, I am making my win. I'm checking it twice, trying to find out who's naughty or nice. Friend of me are coming to town. <laughs> <laughs> Belt Loop, Belt Loop, Belt Loop. Is he in here today? Uh, no, but I'm still giving him a shout out anyway. <laughs> uh, Grove Family Network, thank you for dropping that link. Dropping that link. The evening service at church is about to begin soon. Have a very blessed rest of it. We appreciate you, Psalms 146. She like, I'm working on my name being shouted out, Dorsha. Yeah. <laughs> I got you, boo. I got you. Cheryl from Decatur, where is greater? I'll be seeing you in these streets. Sis, we need to hook up. We need to do something. Um, you know, this is safe space. You know, you're a female because you was a dude. No offense, dude, but you know, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? No. You know, but hook up with him. But he's more like Bro Family Network. Uh, he, he ain't the friendly type on these streets. <laughs> hey, guys, I'm nice. I'm a nice person. <laughs> OMG, I freaking love you, Dorsha. Mwah, mwah. Goody! What's up, Shotty? What's up, Goody? What's up? Mwah. Good eats. Homestead represent. But anyway. I'm out of here. Um, I'll um, go over to the New Orleans Gardener because today is her birthday. So if you haven't, go over to T-Nog, the New Orleans Gardener, and wish her a happy birthday. My birthday present is on its way to her. Something custom made. And I can't wait, but don't y'all tell her because I ain't going to tell her. And then she going to be in for a surprise because on her little video she had on IG, she was wearing the earrings that I... And I gave her uh -huh, from last year. So, pick a boo, go over there, give Auntie Linda some love. You know, I'm 50 years old now, so I need to get my exercise in whenever I can. So, give me staring in the pot. I feel 60, y'all. I feel 60, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, on Wednesday, I will be live at 7 p.m. talking about how to identify frenemies. That should be interesting. Okay. We hey, were... Renee, you back. Hey, Renee. Hey, Renee. Hey, Renee. You got to say it like Ice, ice Cube. Yay, yay. Yay, yay. Get in some.
dirt, everyone. Everyone gets in some dirt. See, you don't want to bring it outside. This is why it. Grow Family Network, this is why we can't crawl across pollinate because, you know. Oh, we don't pollinate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, girls, come and sleep in our bed tonight. No. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. But you remember. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, Ariana, wow! Oh my goodness, that baby right there. She, like, she be sideways. She be like, "Woo!" She sleep just like her father. Mm -hmm. That part. Y'all yeah, picking up? Was it still there? <laughs> I'm like, "Good morning." <laughs> anyway, uh, let's end this with prayer, as we always do. And Sunday backyard farmer will be the person to do the prayer. He did it one time, y'all. Remember when I had that migraine headache and it was debilitating and I couldn't end my live and Sunday got up here and prayed. So he's going to do it again because of my birthday month. Come on. We love our bread. We love our butter. But most of all, we love each other. Thanks, guys. See you next time. In Jesus' name. May the Lord keep you safe and you're going in and coming out. No hurt, harm, or danger will come near your dwelling place. Your family, your friends, your children are protected in their schools, in their places of business, and on the highways and the byways. We thank Jesus for his blood and for his stripes. Is there any need of healing that is in this chat? We declare by Jesus stripes, you are healed. God is still a God of healing. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. If there is any lack in this chat, we thank God that he is Jehovah Jireh, the God that provides. He provides for us early in the morning, even while we sleep. We are so unworthy, but yet he has called us worthy. And we thank him and he, when we praise him for every single blessing that he has brought our way, including y'all. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye. See you next time.